What I'm going to demonstrate for you today is um, using the open source framework to create a grid to list uh, a series of records that's going to embed into the HTML page that you see on screen. And I'm going to do that by uh, quickly comparing against how you would do this using the commercial tools that some of you um, may already be familiar with. So using the uh, commercial tool, I would create the screen um, by very simply dragging and dropping widgets in the, in the design tool, which is a commercial product. And this is all point and click, drag and drop. I can edit text right here in the, in the widget. Um, I can add a field to my grid, for example, to display some dynamic data. And then I configure the widgets by setting a series of properties here in this property uh, window. Some of those properties um, include binding um, to the fields which will be used to populate data into the components. Now with the open source framework, um, this, is, this is done quite a bit differently. Um, so here um, I'm using the designer to create my display. Uh, the designer uh, is actually going to generate these JSON files that Scott mentioned. And with the open source uh, framework, we're going to have to code that, those files ourselves. Um, there's also some differences in the server-side programming as well. With one of these uh, screens that I've created with the commercial tools, I might drive the screen using um, an RPG program that uses our commercial open access handler. So this is a, a type of programming that um, a lot of you are probably familiar with. This allows us to uh, communicate with this rich display as if it were a normal display file in RPG. So other than a special keyword to um, enable using the open access handler, you wouldn't uh, really know the difference between this RPG program and, and a green screen display. So it, uh, it communicates uh, um, with the display using the standard record I.O. operations. Our handler provides you with a stateful environment that's uh, equivalent to, um, to what you're used to on a, on a green screen. So now let's look at, at how this whole thing would be done using the open source uh, tools. So let's have a look at this page. Um, my grid is going to embed into this HTML page. And I'll show you what this page looks like. So I'm going to open it up in a text editor. And uh, you'll see here on line um, 9 and 10 that uh, we're linking in the uh, style sheet uh, for Profound UI. This provides the default styling for the widgets. And then we're also linking in the open source um, UI framework. Uh, the file here is called runtime.js. This is the open source component which will draw the screens on my HTML page. Uh, down here below, you'll see that um, a call is made to uh, an API that's part of that open source framework to, uh, to start the process. It starts that process by calling a program on the server that um, the job of this program is called a controller. The job of this program is to select a screen for display and to provide data uh, to go into the screen. Um, we'll have a look at, at that in a bit. Uh, after the, the controller does that, though, uh, Profound UI is going to paint the screen into a div element on the HTML page that you see here at, at line 54. So let's have a look first of all at how I would create the screen. As Scott mentioned, this would be done by putting together a JSON file, which I'll show you here in my text editor. And I also have a tree view here on the left where you can see the structure of the file. Uh, if you're not familiar with the JSON format, it might look a bit strange, but um, a very simple way to think about this is that my screen file is basically an array of components that I want to put on the screen. So if you see here on the left in the tree, there's an array that's called items, and it has a series of, of components, one of which is my grid, and then followed by other components that I'm going to put inside of the grid. And uh, each item is really just a set of properties on the left, and values on the right. So creating these files is really um, providing an array of components and properties for those components, which are equivalent to those that you um, would use in the commercial designer, and then values for those properties. Uh, so here I've defined a grid, and then down below here I've defined um, an output field that I'm going to display in the grid. Um, part of this is that I'm defining field names, which will be used to populate data into these components, and we'll have a look at, at how the server-side controller does this. So these properties, um, all of the available properties and, and what they do are documented on our documentation site. 
So you would have a look at that and then put together one of these files with a text editor. Uh, once I've, I've done that, I, I save this off, uh, I put it onto my web server, and then I put together um, the controller program that's referenced here. Now the controller program can be done using any uh, web-capable uh, technology. So this could be a CGI program, um, and I'll actually first show you what this might look like if you coded the controller with CGI Dev 2. Uh, so here I have a, a CGI program created using the open source CGI Dev 2 framework. And uh, basically the job of this controller is to output a, a JSON data structure which um, selects the screen to display just by referencing the JSON file that we just looked at. And then along with that it also references or, or it also provides the data for the fields that are defined in that display. And that's all that this program has to do. So this program just fetches um, a series of records from my products database file and outputs all of the data in, in this JSON format. Now, um, this does not necessarily have to be done with CGI Dev 2. Um, this could be a PHP script, for example. So this is what, what it might look like if I did this with PHP. And again, it's the same concept. The, P, the uh, PHP script is just selecting the view and then outputting uh, the array of records uh, data in JSON format. Uh, 